Hi everyone and welcome to a new video about analog electronics. We continue with our BGT circuits and this is our third example. In this example I will look again at the effect of beta but using a different circuit. So we will see what the effect of beta is in this new circuit. Of course we will work out the calculation step by step and also verify these in our SPICE simulations. So let's look at our example. This is the circuit we have given, the given circuit with the following data. So we have the VBB and VCC, two DC voltage sources, 4 and 20 volts. We have two resistors in this case, RC and RE. So we have the air collector and the emitter resistance. Instead of the base resistance in this case, we have switched that to the emitter resistance. We also know that the transistor is uh, has a value of VBE of 0.7 volts and we have for the first case the beta of 100. This is the current kind of this BGT transistor. What we'd like to calculate the, is the IB, IC and IE. These are the currents or so the base current, the collector current, the emitter current and also the VCE which is the collector emitter voltage. So four unknowns and we repeat the process in A but then for beta is 200. That is actually exact same example as example number two but then using a different configuration because we had here a base resistance now we have emitter resistance and that will change the configuration also the results a lot so let's look at our solutions first step is the beta with 100 what we do is we can set up now at the input again a Kirchhoff voltage law so we can make a loop here and we can set up the VBB is equal to the VBE this plus the voltage across the RE that's shown here in this case, you can see the beta dependency is not there. So we can just substitute the values here, 4 and 400 for the RE and 0 0.7 for VBE. And we can calculate just the emitter current and that will be give us 8.25 milliamps. So you can see it doesn't really matter what kind of a beta it is, has, this uh, transistor has. You get this 8.25 milliamps for the emitter current. Now we know the emitter current is in the linear region of operation, if it's this transistor is operating in that linear region, is given by beta plus 1 times the base current. So the base current can then be calculated once we know the emitter current using this and we can substitute the values because the beta was 100, so you get 100 over 101 in the denominator and you will get 81.7 microamps. Okay. That's for the base current, and now we can calculate also the collector current using this linear formula. Assuming the transfer is in a linear region, beta times IB, we know the beta, we know also the, the IB here, and we have 8.17 milliamps. All right, now we have the currents. Now we can look at the VCE, which is this voltage, and now we can set at the output here the Kirchhoff voltage law again, so we can make a loop at the output. So VCC is this voltage is equal to the voltage across RC plus the voltage VC plus the voltage across RE. So this is the summation you can see here. Now we can say what the VCE is by placing actually the first and the third term to the left side and then flip the equation. You get this expression. Now we know the VCC, which is 20, and the rest of the parameters is also really already have calculated. So 20 minus the 500 times the collector current minus 400 times the emitter current and we have this result. It's 12.62 volts. So we have now everything for question A. Now we repeat the process in question B where the beta is 200. Again, we assume the linear region of operation so we can say this holds so the collector current is equal to the beta times the IB but beta has changed so we'll see the changes we have in this circuit now. The emitter current is still the same as in question A because that doesn't depend on the beta because this loop here doesn't have the beta in the expression. So it's still 8.25 milliamps. We will see it also in the simulator later. But IB needs to be recalculated because IB really depends on beta. So IB is equal to IE over beta plus 1, now we have now 201, because beta plus 1 is 200 plus 1, and now it has 41.04 micrograms, so it decreased from 81.7 to 41.04 micrograms. In the same 
similar case for the collector current because the beta has changed and this times the 200 you will get this and that will give you 8.21 milliamps so you can see this change is not that much a really small change and emitter is the exact same but really what happening what's happening now with the collector voltage collector emitter voltage let's see also that then we have the following again same expression but now using the new values for the collector current and also the the same value for the emitter for this case so only change here is the collector current for the situation in question b for the collector emitter voltage you see this actually this expression now if i substitute the values and also work it out you get 12.60 so just 20 milli volts difference not that much and this is by the way a, a, a bias stable situation which is really nice for the biasing for this transistor for amplifier applications because the collector current and the collector emitter voltage is by changing actually beta from 100 to 200 is almost the same so this is bias stable so let's summarize the result for beta as 100 and 200 so this is the base current you can see the base current is really changed with the effect of variation in beta so you can see base current is really changing but the collector current is really yeah, very close to what we had for beta as 100 and also 200. So this is quite stable. The emitter current is the exact same, and also the collector emitter voltage is quite stable. So very small changes in the VCE and IC, but very really large change in the IB, almost two times smaller. Now let's also look at the DC load line equation, which is very important. What is a DC load line equation? It is an equation you set up for the output loop for this part. So this is the equation you have actually your y value so the solution for the vce and the x value is the collector current now in order to get this equation in terms of only the collector current we need to re rewrite this so we can say ie is again beta plus one times ib and we know the collector current is beta times ib now we can rewrite this as ib is equal to ic over ib IC over beta, I mean, and this can be now substituted in the expression for IE. Now you get the following. So the emitter current is equal to beta plus 1 over beta times the collector current. Now we can now substitute this in here. Then we have an expression with only IC and the VCE. VCC is, of course, just a constant here, and the resistor values are C and RE also let's say a constant value so only changing parameters are the vce and the collector current so we have now the following you can see this part here is the emitter current just substituted using this expression now we have an expression where we can isolate the ic here and we get this coefficient in front of the ic okay now you have an equ equation this is the load line equation for this circuit dc load line equation because we have a dc circuit here now for beta is 100 we get this expression you can see it's 220 minus now this is 500 plus 400 and then 100 over 1 101 over 100 and this is then 904 exactly times ic but when you change the beta to 200 there's a very really small change so then it will be then 20 minus 902 I see. So this is then 201 over 200. So very small change. You can just consider maybe this as just one for very really rapid calculations. Then you have exact same as RC plus RE for each beta. This is an approximation, of course. So you can also see that these two equations are really close to each other. Now we can also say that the VCE, the voltage between the collector and the emitter, is between zero, in an ideal case, and also 20 VCC. So that is, these are the ranges for the VCE. And for the collector current, is when this is zero, you can say that this is VCC over the complete expression in this parentheses, or it is zero. So it is between zero and this maximum value. So we can use this to extreme cases for the collector emitter voltage and also the collector current to set the plot. This is really nice. So we can now make the DC load line plot. Now you can see the x-axis which is the vce which is the collector emitter voltage and this is the collector current in the horizontal axis so it goes from 5 10 15 20 and 25 milliamps 
and this goes from zero, 0 all the way to 20. Now we can now set up the load line equation using the equation we have for the beta is this one, 100, and beta is 200 is this one. So we can now set up this one equation. This is the load line equation, this is the blue. You can see it starts here and goes all the way to 20 when the current is 0. And how much is this? We'll see that later. So beta is 100, the blue line and red line is again ending at the same location but it starts a little bit larger. Why? Because you can see this here. So this is beta is 200. If I look at this part and this, you can calculate this is 22.17 and this is 22.12 and that is calculated using this expression. Because if you substitute in here 200 1 over 200 and the other one is 100 1 over 100 you get this very small change in the let's say the maximum collector current all right now we know for the beta is 100 and beta is 200 that we have the ic and the vce so we can look at the intersections for the blue line first the blue line which is actually for beta is 100 and this so we get the corresponding collector current it is 8.17, this one, and the corresponding collector emitter voltage is 12.62. Now we get a very small change when you go to the beta is 200, so it's really close. So, and then the other one, so it's 812.60, so 20 millivolts to the left, and it is going up by 4 milliamps. So you can see that it is here 8.21. So you can also see in this plot, that this point is shifted a little bit to the left and it is quite stable. So we call this bias stable condition. Of course, if this dot or this intersection move to the left very, or the right very drastically, then you don't have this bias stable condition because you can then move closer to the cutoff or closer to the saturation region. Okay. Now we have our discussion and also the load line. Now we'll, let's also look at the simulation results. This is the plot again, to have it here as the reference. And this is the first simulation result for beta S100. You can see, indeed the base current is 81 point approximately 7 microamps, which is what we have calculated, it's very nice. You'll also see the collector current, which is 8.17 milliamps approximately, also what we have here. The VCE is just 12.62 volts approximately also what we have. And it is then 8.25 milliamps approximately for the emitter current. So all of them do very well, do match very well with our results in our calculations. This is for beta S100. Now looking at the beta S200. So exact same circuit, we only change the beta. You see the base current, 41.04, 41.04 41 approximately. 8.21 milliamps approximately for the collector current. This is 12.60 approximately, so 60 for the collector emitter voltage. And you see here that's 8.25 milliamps exactly now. So we see that indeed this is very nice to see that the simulation results and also the calculations are very close to each other. And we also see again that by changing the beta of this transfer, transistor from 100 to 200, it's a really large change. So 100% actually change in the beta value. You don't see much change in the collector current and also the base emitter, I mean the collector emitter voltage. So this is really important again for the bi-stable design for our amplifiers later in our discussions. There's only one drawback of this circuit because we need now two separate DC sources that can be then of course also tackled using a different circuit configuration and we will see that in the later videos. If you have any questions about this example, please let me know. I will try to answer them as soon as possible. See you next time in another interesting video. Take care.